Hey everybody, my name is Mort and in this video I want to talk about the very basics of anti-aliasing. Alright, let's start out with talking about what anti-aliasing actually is. To break it down, your monitor is built up with a bunch of squares and if you're trying to make a line or a curve, you are actually building that line or curve out of squares and sometimes the line won't seem smooth. So what anti-aliasing can do is to try and smooth things out and make it look more natural. All right, so let's talk about when you should use anti-aliasing. You can, for example, use them if you want to fix a jacket. And if you don't know what a jacket line is, check out my three common mistakes. I'll leave a link up here so you can check that video out. It can also be used to curve out certain angles or lines. And another thing is that it can soften outlines. So if you want to make your outline seem thicker or thinner, you can do that with anti-aliasing too. But one thing is important, if you do it to a piece of art, keep it consistent out through the entire piece of artwork. I just quickly want to show you the difference between anti-aliasing and not anti-aliasing on a piece of artwork I've made anyway. So this one is anti-aliased and this one isn't. And beside you can see I haven't detracted any colors, I've just removed all my anti-aliasing. So you can see down here on the bottom bit how it's uh, kind of like smoothing some of the edges out where over here it just kind of looks flat and yeah, it doesn't really get a dimension of detail. But in general I'm just trying to use it to sort of smooth these round edges out. And you can see it here, I have a jagged line that I fixed, so normally I would have to go from one pixel to two pixels to three pixels and then whatever. Uh, but I've done one, two, two here. So what I've done is basically set one, two, two and a half if that makes sense. We'll get more into details to that, but that is just to kind of show you what anti-aliasing does quickly. So there are two common mistakes that I see a lot when people try to anti-alias. One of them is banding and the other one is just plain old overuse of it. So one of the things you want to avoid is banding and what banding basically is, as you can see here, the pixel is basically just following the outline without like shortening or anything. It's just kind of like melting together. That is called banding and you don't want to do that. Another thing is overuse of anti-aliasing. You can add a lot of anti-aliasing, but the less experienced you is, the more difficult it becomes. So I recommend starting out with only one or two colors when you anti-alias. So remember, don't do banding and don't overuse anti-aliasing. So how do I think and apply about anti-aliasing? Because it can be kind of confusing if you don't quite understand the concept. But if we take a look at this pink line I've made here, it's supposed to showcase these little boxes over here. And you can see the pink line is really how we are supposed to think about this black line here. So it's supposed to be a sort of straight line, but because we are limited by the pixels, it has to go sideways, jump up, sideways, jump up. So with anti-aliasing we can kind of try and emulate the line that we actually want. So when it comes to anti-aliasing, less is really more. I really want to emphasize on it, don't try and overuse it. That is one of the things that really can go wrong when you try and do anti-aliasing. Of course there are styles that go with it, but if you're just doing it to smooth things out a little bit or blend two colors slightly together, less is really more in this case. Again, here is a mistake that I've seen a lot of people do. They just like add one pixel next up, one pixel next up, one up, one pixel and then blah 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 so on. And here we have a different variation of banding that we don't want to do. If I try and fill out this green spot here, you can see it's really just only these pixels that we need to emulate. So what I've done here, this first pixel, I've kind of made a little bit dark and then these two here is kind of bright. Um, again, you don't want to do this one, two, three different colors. You want to try and keep it to a very minimal amount of colors. So either I would do like this or I would just make one color like this. So just want to zoom into this one real quick and talk about something. You might come across a uneven amount of pixel lined, like this one is five pixels long. So I want to say, okay, I don't want to do three because then my anti-aliasing is bigger than my aliasing. So I want to keep it to two. It's just below half of the number length of the pixel. So if the line was this far, I would probably do something like, you know, this amount of length. Let's see, yeah, this seems to fit pretty right. And then of course, if you want to do it two colors, you could do it like this. But you never want to start doing something like, this. 
that's a no-go. So I hope that helped you understand the concept and how to think about anti-aliasing a little bit. Try and keep this purple line method in mind. Like if you didn't have pixels, how would the line look and you know how many half pixels would you have to put in there i know there's not such thing as a half pixel but that's just what i'm calling it in this case so i want to talk a little bit about how to apply anti-aliasing to a video game sprite because a piece of artwork is very different from a game sprite you can see here i've anti-aliased blue around him that fits with the background but in games, your character can come across a variation of different colored backgrounds. So if you start to make anti-aliasing on the outer side of the sprite, you can come across this weird looking stuff here when it comes up against another background. So my suggestion and reminder is if you're going to make anti-aliasing on a sprite for a game, try and build the sprite on a neutral background, like a gray, and try and sometimes see how it looks on a bright background, also see how it looks on a dark background. But in general, just try and build it on a very neutral colored background. Around. That way it's easy to sort of like see if it's in between or if it's too dark or if it's too bright. Another thing I want you to keep in mind if you are going to do anti-aliasing on a game sprite is that you have to think about this sprite might have to be animated. So if you animate something you would have to animate the anti-aliasing as well. I know it may not sound that complicated for more experienced people but if you are a beginner this can be something that can make your animation process even way more difficult. Alright so I want to talk about how anti-aliasing can also be applied to lines. You can see here that these lines are kind of like fading out and it's kind of emulating like a brush that gets thinner and thicker. So you can see down here the line is very thin, but it gets thicker up here. But we can't really make the pixels smaller than one pixel. So this is a way again to sort of like shrink things down because in pixel art everything is just an illusion and you're trying to make, you know, one pixel display as much information as possible. So this is a way that you can sort of like thin out a line in pixel art. I just want to zoom in on my cat guy here because you can see here on his mouth I could just make all these sort of like dark grays be a black line but it's a way for me to sort of like thin these lines out so instead of it's just one thick line it's sort of like look a little bit thinner if you see it from a distance and for example up here you can see I've made one pixel here with his hair and it just it just helps give the illusion of a little piece of a hair sticking up that actually sits in front of his head, right? So try and think about how you can use a thinner li line in some cases instead of just using a plain out black everywhere. So last off, before I end the video, I just want to try and add some anti-aliasing to this guy and talk about my process meanwhile. So first off, I like to have my preview window here of my sprite. So I have a close up view and a far away view. All right, so let's get at it. So I want to make a line here and let's see here seems to be a fine place to add some as well this could probably work here i might do some the hair i definitely want to do some i, I find anti-aliasing working really well on hair here with the ear i want to sort of like instead of the ear looks completely cut off here with the black i can kind of like thin out the line here so it still looks slightly attached to his head here I want to round it a little bit and here I want to attach one and I might want to attach one there as well. No, probably not. Uh, this is a really awkward line but I think it will just work fine as it is. So doing this while I'm recording, it might, I might be a little stressed out so I might not make completely proper decisions but you know, here with the mouth I can probably smooth it out a little bit. Maybe even use the darker line here. Oh, up here with the eyes, I can probably do something like this to make the eyes seem more roundish. That's maybe too much. Probably do it over here as well. So you can see here the white goes from one pixel, one pixel, two pixel, one pixel. So here I'm going to put in a half gray tone. But because I'm using my palette, I, I kind of have to stick with some colors. Here in the eyeball, I can probably do it below just to give it a little bit of a roundness. Maybe here in the corners as well. It's a little tough next to the pink here. I can probably add one there, that would be fine too. No, I actually feel like it's better without. Uh, down here I could put a half pixel on his arm. 
but I'm not going to do that because I actually like the way it is. I'm gonna put replace this black pixel though. Maybe if I do it more like this. Down here, I can kind of get his feet showing a little more. And uh, maybe just add a little bit up here. You can hear one pixel, one pixel, one pixel, one pixel. So to give his belly a little more roundness, I can use anti-aliasing here to give it a bit of a round roundness field. Uh, I might give him a little belly there. There we go. Uh, the back end here I might just make darker. No, it doesn't seem to like. But I want to kind of do this. That makes his... Um, more like his thumb is going in with and uh, actually connecting over his hand there so you can see this is just all one colored anti-aliasing right um, so you don't really have to apply all that much then I could go in and shade it if I want to but I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna just keep it flat colored with a bit of anti-aliasing on oh I can also do it there that might help out the illusion a little more of Yeah, that seems fine, that seems fine. Oh. I mean, you can always uh, improve on it and add more, but I think this is uh, fine as it is. I'm not gonna go too much into it. I just kinda wanna show you my process of thinking. Uh, I actually don't like that, but I think this might be better. All right, I mean, that looks fine, it looks fine. So that is a little bit of how I think about anti-aliasing when I do it. Um, I try to use it to either thin outlines or smooth curved lines out, as you can see. Alright, so before I end the video, I just want to say that you can find a link to all my assets down below. You can find my color palette, you can find a very simple base in here. There's all sorts of little things you can take a look at. And if you're a little bit of an apparel geek like I am, you can also find a link to my shirt stores down below where you can get some cool looking t-shirts with some uh, pixel art I've made on it. And with that said, thank you so much for watching guys, I'll see you in the next video. If you like what you saw, make sure to give the video a like, and if you want to see more content like this, make sure to be subscribed. You can also help me help you by supporting on Patreon, and with that said, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.